behind. So over on the right here, you can see this is the original version I built about two years ago. Uh, it was pretty limited by the modeling tool I was using, which was Tink Tinkercad, which is a great starting out tool to use um, to build 3D objects, but it really has some limitations and you can see um, like the number of sides on an object between that and the new version that I've built here. Um, what I'm showing today is, I guess, the revised version. This, if, if I consider this Eve uh, 1.0, this is Eve 2.0. So this is the new version that I've built over the Christmas holidays. Um, basically using it as an opportunity to jump from using Tinkercad onto something a little bit more robust, uh, in this case using now Fusion 360. Uh, and as you can see, between the two different models, there is quite a jump in kind of accuracy. Things like tolerances between like the side arms versus the original um, are quite dramatic. Now, not only did I want to build this as um, something for myself, um, given all the people that had helped me over the various years building my own things, whether it be a BB-8, a uh, C-3PO, uh, a Wally. -E. Um, in this case, I wanted to be able to return the favor and share up all the designs, the code that I did as well. Um, all the codes under an MIT license, so you're free to use it anywhere you like. Um, all I do ask is for at least the STLs for it is just for personal use, not for commercial use. Uh, other than that, free to use however you like. Um, in terms of next steps, I guess the first thing to do is show you the difference between the two. Uh, if you look back on my um, YouTube, you'll probably find some old clips of it. In fact, I'll probably put a short clip in here. Uh, and then I will show you the revised version of Eve 2.0. Uh, you may notice some flicker in the eyes. You don't see that in person. That's just from the refresh rate that comes up when you're doing a video. Um, so the first one is down the bottom. I've included a touch sensor. So you can touch the touch sensor. And that'll trigger the animation, the sound, the arm, the head movements. And obviously the LED in the base. So we'll focus on the bottom down here. So that's the LED. It's got a chase light. Uh, when you first boot up, there is a kind of a rainbow animation just to let you know that it started. Uh, or if there's problems with the DF player SD card and it can't find the MP3s, it'll flash red so it'll know that you're not ready to start. Uh, moving up the body, uh, you'll see a small chase light that goes across here. Um, I had grand plans to do a little bit more than that, um, but once you paint the body, it really becomes difficult to be able to shine a light through it. So if you were to do just a 3D print only version, um, I've included some, um, some elements to help with uh, the LED lighting. So effectively be three lights, there's a heart shape, and then there's a leaf shape as well, which were some of the patterns you can see in the Wally -E movie. So maybe that'll work for someone else um, who have chosen not to paint it. Um, you'll also notice the arms again. These are a lot more flush than the last one. Again, if I press it, they'll come out. They'll do the movement, and they'll retract back in again pretty smoothly on both sides. Uh, head obviously movement. The hardest part of that whole thing is actually this glass cover here. Um, I've done this in a resin, so I tried all sorts of things. I did a clear resin originally. Um, I tried to airbrush that, didn't come up well. I did clear resin and then I tried some window tinting material, but even with a heat gun, I couldn't get it to stick to the shape. It would just basically bunch up on itself. Um, it's just too curved a shape for it. Uh, so the way I did it in the end, I have done a clear resin mixed with a little bit of black resin, though just an E-Sun PLA uh, on both elements, so at least it would mix nicely, and just stirred it up and printed, and that came up really good. And then just to try and make it a little bit more shiny, did a lot of sanding. So uh, for the glass itself, it started with a 400 grit just to remove any of the support lines that were in there. Uh, then an 800, a 1500, a 3000, and then I used some buffing compound uh, just to polish it up. And that's done quite a nice job. Um, what else have we got? Painting. If you really want to go down the paint route, I would thoroughly recommend some kind of primer filler or putty spray to try and help uh, fill up the layer lines. Uh, I was going to do a 2K clear coat, but to be honest, the paint on this one came up just nicely. So um, given it came up so well for me, I didn't want to risk 
trying to put a 2k clear coat and end up with a run after doing all that nice work. So all of this is a spray putty that's been sanded right down to about an 800 grit. Um, then a Rust-Oleum high gloss and then just leave it. Let it, let it gas, degas, don't touch it. As much as you maybe wanted to attempt to do things for a few days, leave it for at least 48 hours. You, if you try and touch it before that, you'll feel the slightest tack. Don't, you're, you're too soon. Um, that's the only downside with playing with a gloss with a Rust-Oleum. Uh, but otherwise, she's come up good. In terms of the sound she makes, there are 10 MP3 files in total. Um, I haven't included them in the GitHub repository. I just didn't want to touch copyright type stuff like that. Um, so you can search for files like that. There's plenty of them available on the net. Um, the code is available in it, and the SDLs that I've created, uh, I will share up probably in the Wally Builders uh, Facebook forum group. Um, in terms of accuracy, it's not screen accurate. Um, I haven't gone to any length to try and get things to be proportionally correct. It was more about fitting in the servos that I had. Uh, effectively, these are Metal Gear um, MG90S servos. Uh, there's one MG996 server, but it could be any server at the top. Um, you could probably even get away with one of the smaller, like the MG90 servos. You just have to change the neck plate. Probably would be strong enough to move it, um, but I went for one that I had readily available, so there was nothing nothing fancy about it. Um, all you need is at least a 90 degree movement. It doesn't have to be 180 degree, but it's up to you. Uh, in terms of how it all works together, the primary thing we've got is an Arduino. Um, on the Arduino side, it's just an Arduino Nano. That is controlling the LEDs in the base, the touch sensor, the LEDs in the chest, and it's triggering the Pololo Maestro, so it's like a secondary servo board, and the servo board's for servo smoothing, so things like the neck movement, so it doesn't move quite so fast. I didn't really care about the speed of the arm, so I left them run full speed, um, but it meant that I could trigger a... Um, a, a servo movement without having to worry too much about trying to control the movement within a within a loop. I could let the loop focus on the LED lights. Uh, the eyes themselves are completely independent from the rest of it. They are running a Tensi M4 Express. There is a project called Uncanny Eyes on the Adafruit website. That's what it's based from. And then I've created a custom eye uh, pattern file for it so that it looks like Eve's eyes rather than the ones which are built in there. Um, and then I've configured it as such. So it's the same eyes, the same M4 Express. There's no uh, connectivity between the M4 Express and the Arduino Nano currently. I could probably even ditch the Arduino Nano and redo it under the un uncanny eyes on the Tensi board and just modify the code. But there's enough room in the head for the two. The cheapest chips for an Arduino Nano these days are only a few bucks. Um, so I've left it that way. Uh, what else have we got? We do have instructions as well. Uh, so on the GitHub repo, you will see I've created a guide, uh, what parts are you going to require, and then step-by-step -step instructions. I haven't gone completely down how to solder or anything like that that's over to you, likewise with finishing. Um, but you'll get the idea of like these wiring diagrams, what pins on the various different places, uh, and obviously code and how to deploy that. Um, I had a few requests when I built the first one is, could I share it up? I did actually share up the GitHub repo uh, on a link on that uh, one. I don't know if anyone actually built it. Um, I am a lot more happy with the way that the second one's come out. So. This is one of the movements, so no arms on that one. This is the head shaking. And then the shaking the hand. So, yeah, that's it. If you want to build your own, all the info's there available for you. Um, feel free to ask questions. You can kind of get hold of me through the comment section on YouTube or if you're in the Wally Builders group in Facebook, you can reach out to me there.